We're going to be doing total ablative CO2 on our patient here today, who I'm going to call Kay. And Kay has had some intraoral blocks already to get her nice and numb around her mouth. Before we get started, we want to make sure our patient is fully comfortable. During the procedure, we're going to be using the Zimmer, which is a cooling air that helps to take away the heat of the laser. She's also had a very strong numbing cream on for about an hour now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. We're going to mainly work around this patient's mouth um, to really see if we can help to lift some of these deeper lines and give her more of an overall um, a tightening effect. Sometimes we do need to turn up our settings a little bit in order to get to the depth where we can really clear out some of these lines. And that's the difference between what we're doing today and a typical active FX, which is a slightly lighter treatment. Kelly's had an active FX in the past, um, and she did well with it, but we'd like to see if we can get even more improvement for her. So we're gonna go ahead and just do a test spot here. First little zap here. And that's how it feels, okay? I'm gonna keep going here. We'll start up here on the lip. We've completed our first pass on our patient with the ablative uh, settings of CO2. You can see there's a nice white outline where we've gone around her mouth and some of these deeper creases. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and wipe in between, and then we're gonna do another pass. So we take a wet gauze, and we kind of gently wipe the skin where we've treated her with the laser. This allows us to get even deeper during our next pass and helps us to really work on some of those resistant creases. So we've now completed the ablative part of the procedure on this patient. We're gonna do a little bit of feathering right around the outside of the areas that we've treated with the ablative CO2 so that when she heals, she won't have a distinct margin between the area that we treated and the area that we didn't treat. So let's go ahead and just do a little bit of feathering. We're gonna go down on our settings in order to do that to make it blend in. We're gonna get that cold air on there again to make sure she's comfortable. First little zap here, Kelly. Just a little bit of feathering all the way around here. Now the redness is gonna last anywhere from four to six weeks after this procedure. Kelly's gonna get some pretty intense feeling by the second week. Um, and the redness will fade gradually with time so that she won't see a delineation between the area that we treated and the area that we didn't treat as long as she's wearing her sunscreen. So with, with these ablative patients, we always encourage a very religious sunscreen so that she has an excellent result and she gets the best healing possible.